10 lonely lepers, traveling companions by necessity, not choice, wander the streets in search of enough to eat. They have no illusions of a life beyond day-to-day -day existence. They have seen their reflection in the disdainful looks of others and felt the sharp shame of being pummeled with rocks, driven to the outskirts of their hometowns, and told to tuck themselves into the margins of life. Whatever they seek from Jesus isn't imbued with much hope. Jesus, master, they cry, have mercy on us. But they dare not come near the gathered crowd. Like a dog trained with an invisible electric fence, these despised creatures know that bad things happen if they cross the invisible line between us and them. So they cry out from a safe distance and Jesus who has lived his life crossing the borders and redefining who is in and who is out singles out the untouchable lepers for a blessing. Go present yourself to the priests. In his command is the implied promise that in doing so they will be made well and before they even reach the priests they are healed. Ten joyful, relieved humans given back their humanity, outcasts no more. One of them, the one who is doubly despised, because he is a Samaritan as well as a leper, turns around and in loud shouts of joy, thanks God for his blessing. And he falls at Jesus' feet in gratitude, and Jesus tells him to rise and go on his way. Your faith has made you well. But what can this mean? What can this mean when all ten received the blessing of health for faithfully following his command to go see the priests? The blessing bestowed upon the one who gives thanks must be something else, something new, a second blessing. The one who was doubly cursed is now doubly cursed. Less. What grace did the other nine miss out on? What grace can we receive when we recognize and give thanks to God for our blessing? The secular holiday that we call Thanksgiving may, in fact, be one of the most important traditions we practice this year. Not the turkey, the stuffing, or even the table set and crammed with 20 of your favorite and least favorite relatives, but the tradition of giving thanks for gratitude. Gratitude is the vaccine we are most in need of if we are to ward off the despair as we lock down and head into the winter months. This is likely the hardest Thanksgiving we have faced as a country since World War II, perhaps. Many of us are without our loved ones at the table. Some of us are feasting at the food bank, some in hospital isolation wards, and still others are new to the streets. After today's worship service, two families will be coming for food because they have nothing to serve this Thanksgiving. And a dozen more received food support from us through the week. We have seen a 200% increase in our benevolent spending over last year and a staggering 500% increase in our outreach through Stone Soup, Neighbors Helping Neighbors, and our food security programs. Yeah. These are not easy times for many of us. And most of us are scared, exhausted from worrying about which door handle and neighbor to avoid. For months now, we have been crying out as the ten leopards did, Lord, have mercy. And there has been relief as Tanya Davis points out in her prayer in discovering that we are not alone in our loneliness. 
The grace that is God holds us as the galaxies hold the stars. And we find healing for the hungry in our church pantry, in government subsidies, in individuals donating to end poverty, in neighbors helping neighbors. But there is something else, something else that God offers those who will take the time to practice gratitude. Gratitude for what good can be found in this moment double blessing for the one who knows where life itself finds its source. The one grateful Samaritan prostrates himself at Jesus' feet and thanks him. And Jesus looks into the eyes of the Samaritan and says, get up, your faith has made you well. And the Greek word that is used is sudso, which has a complex, multivalent meaning. The man is made well, but also whole and safe. The ten were blessed, but the one Samaritan who recognizes the blessing, experienced gratitude, found sudso, wellness, wholeness, salvation. Long, long before, the scientific studies showed us that saying thank you reduces stress, irritability, helps you sleep at night. Jesus knew that the healing the leper needed most was the blessing of knowing that our very breath is a miraculous event that can inspire wellness of the soul. And that blessing happens for those who humble and willingly enter into the posture of gratitude, even in these most uncertain of times. Mary Jo Letty tells a story about a child called Christopher that offers us a poignant reminder of the power of gratitude. There is a Toronto couple who desperately wanted a child to love. They had waited so long and suffered through so many miscarriages until one day they finally gave birth to a little boy. And with gratitude for hope fulfilled, they named him Christopher, the Christ bearer. And very soon after his birth, they learned that his lungs would not grow along with the rest of his body. And right from the start, he was weak in muscle tone and he struggled to hear and see his life, the doctors said, would be limited to a few months. And oh, those who knew this young family reacted with profound sorrow for the couple. But they were quickly drawn into gratitude as they discovered that the couple was more filled with love than with sorrow. Day after day, they held his tiny hand through the opening in the incubator and they sang love songs to him through the plastic walls of his universe. While others had focused immediately on his impending death, his parents dwelled in a sense of gratitude for his life. While most reacted in anger at what was being taken away, they were revering what had been given. For them, Christopher was more an amazing grace than a possession that they had any right to hold on to. Their faith had made them well, whole, saved from death's sting. Beyond this sacred moment of storytelling, there is indeed a world overwhelmed by despair and fear. Laments and cries for mercy are desperately needed, for the world is not right yet. But the world also needs the antidote to anxiety that would keep our souls in a lockdown more painful than any province could impose. Like the tenth leper, we are invited to be practitioners of gratitudes and articulators of grace. Yeah. 
There is loss this Thanksgiving. There is also much to give thanks for. Simple meals, frontline workers, universal health care, sunsets and starlights, vast oceans and tiny furry creature cuddles. Being alone together for a God who knows our struggles and blesses us with the healing power of gratitude. So on this special day, my friends and fellow students of Christ, let me offer you my own grateful heart. I regularly feel blessed to live, love, and work with you. You are the heralds of blessings and the bearers of gratitude in a world that is desperately, desperately in need of thanksgiving. Thank you, and thank God for you. Amen.